Hello, let's talk about Project Complete. Project Complete has two sides to it. The first thing is planning, planning where you can plan a new terminal strip. As an idea here, you know, let's say we create a new terminal strip X1. Then on those terminals, you can pick here a um, certain number of terminals. Once you place them, you can just double click and do a nice terminal strip like this. It's, it's very quick. It's, it's quite efficient to actually do so. And what they have created also is inside this project complete planning, they've added a, a very, very interesting feature, the feature about the auto correction. This has an extreme high value because not everyone knows exactly what part number this specific height isolator is. So it has a very great value. Parallel to this, we also use it for the marking. And as you know, marking is a topic of its own. Uh, marking, you can mark up wires. Wires can be, you know, one, two, three, four, five. That would be nice. But in reality, they are more something like 112.12, 112.12, because you need two of them, right? And then you have to move on. So if you have two of those wires, like 24 VDC, then you have to type in, you know, 24 VDC. Of course, you can do copies and pasting. Uh, that's certainly an option. And a lot of you will actually say, um, I have the possibility to import an Excel, and that goes even quicker. Yes, unfortunately, the, the, the labels we have to create are very often unique. I mean, most people I talk to, they have unique projects. They're, they're, they tell me they're all custom projects. No two projects are alike. So the number of 24 VDC wires is never the same. The number of common wires is never the same. It changes from project to project. Now, of course, these are great tools, but these two tools are even greater if you combine them with the right system. Um, you know that this information that is here could actually come from your designers. And this is typically what happens. They submit to you a schematic, you take it over in whatever format, you read it out, and then you create those. Well, I have good news. If you combine this with the ePlan system, you could actually benefit from what has been drawn in the ePlan system, right? In ePlan, when we draw schematics, not only do we handle all the pages in one system, but when we draw schematics, whether it's a standard schematic where you simply go here inside of configurator and you say, okay, hey, let's do four more motors, you know, on page 25 and, and just hit the generate button and boom, it generates. This, of course, can be applicable to maybe 80% of what you do, maybe 20%. I don't know. Not everything is configurable. Sometimes these things are actually special, specific. Now, interesting to see and to know about ePlan is that when you draw a terminal inside ePlan, not only do we assign a part number that actually comes from a wide clouded database called the ePlan data portal, where that part actually came from with all its specifications from a commercial point of view and even from a 3D point of view. But more interestingly is here, you can create a terminal strip. Let's call this terminal strip TB25, because we're on page 25, whatever, right? And here we have inside this system a smart interpretation of the terminals and slash quote terminal strips. So I can actually open the terminals, terminal strips. I can check them out. I can view the parts. I can sort them page based or anywhere where else. I can number them if I want to. Some numbering schemes are just sequential numbering schemes. Sometimes people will tell me, no, 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 no. I number my stuff by uh, the wire numbers I do place. So what that does is basically when I do my wire numbering, which is basically an ePlan, just an automatic scheme here, I could eventually use these as my wire numbers. For instance, here, one typical thing that a lot of people do in this particular wire numbering scheme is that whenever a wire number is used, that is automatically also transferred onto the terminal. So the terminals get a, a tricky number, same as a wire number is very tricky, okay? This is very standard in this industry here. 
Another thing we can do in ePlan is we can draw stuff up open-handed. Uh, we, we work with um, the, the device concept, which is primarily associating each uh, specific device. Let's say here we take a Schneider or Siemens device, whatever. And these are different companies where you pick a device and depending on what that device is, you can just drag and drop it. And most of the time, it would actually come up with a symbol. But in this case here, I actually wanted to talk about symbols because in ePlan, we have a like NFPA, North American style symbols, as IEC symbols. You don't have to create them. It's like an alphabet, right? 26 letters, well, we have maybe 400 symbols. But these symbols are over and over always used, either in the North American style or in the European style. Now, interesting, you'll see that if I place it, the wire that appears here appears automatically. Now, in the same way, I could also draw a different way around. I could actually start with just the symbols. So there are different ways in ePlan to work with this. I could go here and say, okay, I'm looking for very specifically a signal device, uh, which is here, signal devices, my pilot light, and I can just drag and drop, and you, you will see something. Not only do the wire appear, but also the wire, the, 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 the lights here are numbered automatically. Interestingly, uh, the uh, way we actually handle here the um, common is just basically dragging and dropping, boom. You see, we never draw wires. We also rarely, very rarely have to um, trim or cut. We don't know trimming and cutting. What we do is we just pick the symbol we want. And once we have the symbol we want, all we do is we just drag and drop it across a series like this, right? Nothing else. I could drag and drop it across a series like this on the other side would be perfect. These two could be actually a series of terminals that I would add to an existing terminal strip. It could be, right? You have a TB24 and you want to add this to TB24. Of course, I just messed up my TB24. When you look at it, I TB24 existed on a previous page with different numbers and whatever. Now, obviously, if I go in here and I rerun my uh, wire numbers, like I said earlier, here, new wires, new wire numbers, and most likely some numbers are actually dependent on the I.O., some numbers are dependent on the other thing, and that creates a whole new structure of terminal strip. It's a complete different picture. And when we look at terminal strips like this, we often will look at something like this and say, hey, we have jumpers. This is cool. Now, it happened here in this particular case that the jumpers all got organized as they should have and these two here probably or most likely will go at the end these are accessories but these are the accessories that are so complex to understand how they work now what you can do also of course is here you can move it up and down and, and, and play around with it. it it's really up to you right to do whatever you want with it and these are primarily our terminals now interesting would be to have a system like ePlan talk to project complete, and they do. Look at this here. I can actually take this project and transfer the data over to project complete planning so that I do not have to actually myself create or correct anything. So you can do this in a manual way, okay? I'm gonna show you very quickly here. And I can pick the TB24, I can pick the TB1, the TB125, 120, whichever. And I can just simply export it. And what this will do is it will open inside your project complete. Plus, it will actually transfer the tags that we had earlier. And we can, of course, then check out if all these tags are correct or incorrect. Uh, we can rotate them, we can do whatever we want, we can order the parts. Everything is now here the way that, you know, we, we had them originally inside ePlan. So it's an exact construction of what is outside in, in ePlan. Now, interestingly also is that you can do the auto-correction. And the auto-correction will actually then eventually add these clip fix and isolating plates. Everything and everywhere where you need it will be added. It's really a cool feature. Now imagine you don't have to do this manually anymore. It's actually coming from the schematics 
and it's pumping it over automatically. Why? Because it's smart enough to recognize these jumpers. It's smart enough to recognize the tags, puts the device tag, puts everything in there. Now, imagine the labels. We have, again, with the system ePlan, the possibility to run through the project complete marking. So there's a direct transfer. There's an interface, as you can see, within ePlan that Phoenix Contact created for project complete. And what it does, you just pick whichever you want, right? Whatever label you want, and it just spits it out. So it goes through all the schematic pages, reads out the information, reads the information that eventually a wire is split between this page and this page. All the information is actually gathered together and it's transferred here onto the marking system. And here, as you can see, it's actually still operating as we look at it. It is importing the very last stretch here. It's importing the wires. And in this particular case, I actually took the luxury to add the wire tag source and target. Um, in a case like this, obviously, when you hit a terminal, uh, you have a redundancy a little bit because the terminal has the same number of the, as the uh, terminal number itself. So eventually, in this kind of a concept with such a system, we could actually simplify a little bit the terminals. We could go back in here and say, you know what? Why don't we number the terminals just sequentially? One, two, three, four, five, six. It's going to be a lot easier to actually pinpoint these terminals. And this is exactly what I will want, or this is exactly the uh, style that I want. So then all you do is you rerun the marking if you want, okay? And the marking will just readapt itself. This would have probably taken a day or two days, or probably nobody would have ever done the wires with source and target because that's just insane, the information and the time that would be spent on there. So it, this would probably be impossible. But imagine you have now your device tags updated. You have your wire tags perfectly updated. And when it's a terminal, you can see the terminals are just um, not repeated now, they're just sequential. It's really cool. Now you can print, you can do whatever you want. I believe really when you combine Project Complete with ePlan, individually, there are two independent, very good systems. But when you put them together, you can't say they are the same. They are that much more powerful. You are that much more efficient. Now, what does this efficiency mean? It's directly translating and saving of time. It's directly translating in projects coming out faster or making more projects in the year. So there's a big return on investment for you by combining these two. So whatever they cost these systems is irrelevant to the time and saving that you get out of that efficiency. Put these two systems together, try them out. You'll see the intelligence we have on the ePlan system combined with the intelligence of the project complete put together just is doubled and tripled. It's, it's, it's just amazing. Take a look at it.